What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Now today I've got for you three fantastic r slash I don't work here lady stories. In the first one, OP somehow manages to black his way into an event kind of by chance to be completely fair to him and ends up meeting some seriously important people in his country. How to shake hands with three world leaders in less than a minute with no security credentials. First time posting. Even though I'm a grizzled old Reddit veteran of, checks watch, seven hours. Back in 89, Ray Hanatchen, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, was sworn in as Canada's new governor general, Canadian envoy to the crown. This was a big deal for me because I was best friends with his son. So my mum and I got invited to the inaugural gala in Ottawa. We were flown in a Gulfstream. I'd never even been on a plane before and would be staying at Rideau Hall, the GovG's official residence. To properly document this August event, I borrowed my uncle's very expensive, very impressive looking camera and lenses and also got a new used suit. I felt pretty damn important for a shy grade 10 kit. Anyway, I was waiting in line with the rest of the plebs to be ushered in to stand at the back in the House of Commons when I was approached by two RCMP officers who asked me to step out of line. Now, I'm pretty sure, guys, that an RCMP officer is just a police officer in Canada. Of course, my immediate thought was, oh, God, what did I do? But they informed me that I was in the wrong line and to please go with them. Confused, I looked around and then down at myself and saw the expensive camera dangling from my neck, partially obscuring the lanyard that allowed me onto the grounds. Holy heck, they thought I was press. I always looked older than my actual age back then. I glanced over to my mum and she silently mouthed, go, and so off I go to the press gallery. The cops plop me into the cluster of photographers from the national press, and suddenly I'm sharing the same bird's eye view as Sandy Ronaldo and Peter Mansbridge the Barbara Walters and Tom Brocco of Canada. Um, now, the good thing is that if you don't know who any of those people are, well, I'm in the same boat. They just sound like some lovely names. I snap away happily and hobnob with members of the Fifth Estate for a bit and head for the stairs to go find my mum. But once again, I'm stopped by the RCs. Well, the jig is up, I thought. But the officer actually said to me, Sir, the press conferences are through the other exit behind you. What the what? Once again, I'm led into another room I have no business being in, and in the span of 20 minutes, I've met Trudeau, Moroni, Shretien, Bouchard, Turner, Clark, and a pack of others. Now, these names might not mean much to non-Canadians, but trust me, these are some of the biggest, honchiest honchos in Canadian politics for three decades. The only ones who knew I didn't belong were Ray himself and Roy Romano, my province's future premier. They just did a double take and thought the whole thing was hilarious. Never ratted me out. Classy guys. So there you go. Three PMs, one former, one current and one future, all because I didn't own my own camera. You know what, OP? I mean, to be fair, it's not as if like you did any of that, right? You weren't like trying to be tricky, trying to sneak in. You know, you see those videos on YouTube now like, oh, I snuck into, you know, the royal wedding or something like that. Or like Mayweather, Logan Paul fight, stuff like that. OP was just chilling. You know, he had his lanyard. He was going to go in. But the, but the cameraman, the camera did it all for him. You know, what I really rate, by the way, I really rate. Um, Who was it? I don't know who OP said. Two of the blokes. One, one, what was his name? Roly something. To be honest, I don't know who he was. Roy Ram uh and ray the nice guys who didn't rat you out even though they knew you weren't supposed to be in there good lads because you know look important people are important it's kind of you know in the name and and someone that was a little bit you know more i don't know up themselves probably would have been like oh get this guy out of here he doesn't know what he's doing he shouldn't be in here with us important people but they were seeing the funny side good on them now moving on to our second story no i won't clean your table but you can talk to my manager and she won't either a couple years ago i was working for a theme park as a live entertainment support tech as you can tell by my username which is spotlight desire i'm a lighting stagehand by trade this particular story takes place on my second day of work after returning from a four-year hiatus we were all working hard to get the summer show up on its feet and ready for tech in a couple of weeks so we took a longer lunch break than normal low-level staff like myself and our department supervisors at a pizza place across the streets now the way we dress for this position was fairly distinctive amongst our staff but i guess less so when you leave the park we wear show blacks all black clothing down to socks and undershirts 
Some stickers even insist you wear black underwear. The black shirts, which were button-up work shirts we had, as well as the ball cap several of us were wearing, had the name of the theme park and entertainment in silver in a less than missable fonts. On top of which, we had name tags with the company logo and our tool belts on our hips. The pizza place, however, had shorter sleeve black polos for managers or t-shirts. And though they were a similar black theme, they were not at all alike. Anyway, sorry for the long setup, but it's important you know how unbelievable this situation was. So, I'm making my way through the buffet, grabbing pizza and some salad when I hear it. The impatient shriek of, excuse me. Now I'm focused on my lunch, as we are still on a time crunch after all. Naturally, I assume this woman just wanted me to step aside, so I politely moved. I heard a distinct huff, then felt a not too gentle tap on my shoulder. I turned around, confused. Can I- Finally, I've managed to get someone's attention. All these tables are filthy and I want you to clean one for me. I blinked for a moment, about to utter the words you all expect. I got as far as I don't- I know you're on your lunch break, she interrupted, but you can stuff your face in a bit. You have a paying customer here with no place to sit. Am I just supposed to eat standing like an animal? Yes, she actually said that. I point to the logo on my work shirts and she doesn't even look. But nonetheless, I say, sorry, I can't clean your table for you. There's always someone at the register. Maybe they can do- But you're right here, right now. Why should I have to wait for someone else to do your job? At this point, I just sigh and begin to walk off. Karen shrieks, I want to talk to your manager. As it so happens, guess who was sitting at the table with our staff? Suddenly, I get an idea that probably belongs on our slash malicious compliance. I flag my manager over. Hey, OP, what's going on? This woman said she wanted to speak to my manager. Uh, why would she- This lazy sack of poop isn't doing her job. I want you to tell her to clean me a table. Now. Uh, OP doesn't work for the pizza place, and neither do I. What the F is wrong with people these days? No one ever gives good service anymore. My manager, seeing just what I've been putting up with, went off on Karen. She didn't yell and was very controlled, but it was actually to the point where it was quite scary. I wish I could remember exactly what she'd said, but I'd wandered out of earshot after she told me to take my food and sit down. All I know is Karen finally seemed to get the message. Now, here's the best part. I don't know exactly why, but Karen left without ever eating a single slice of pizza that she'd paid for. My manager ended up giving me some cash to cover my lunch after all the rubbish. So thanks, Karen, I guess. I mean, this one story, guys, let's be realistic. Could be on r slash entitled parents, could be on r slash malicious compliance, could be on r slash idiot. I don't know, is that a subreddit? Who knows? Um, But it's found its way onto r slash I don't work here, lady. And to be honest, yeah, it works. Unlike OP at that store. Just because they're wearing the same color, you know, top as someone who works at the store doesn't mean you work there and also they're eating pizza out with all the customers i don't normally see you know workers at a pizza place doing that maybe that's my experience but um yeah come on seriously you idiot you don't deserve any pizza get out of my store and now moving on to our final story of today's i don't work here lady episode security thinks i am his relief I work for a pretty large security company that has a contract with the absolute biggest employer in the city. This is where I work security for. I also live in a security protected apartment complex. Plot twist. It's protected by the same company that I work for. My apartment was right next to the clubhouse. This was where security parked. Some background information. The company as a whole uses tan shirts for supervisors and white shirts for officers. But the specific contract for this employer dictated that supervisors wore white shirts and officers wore blue. Now, I am a supervisor. To top it off, my apartment complex is only a 5-minute drive, 15-minute walk from where I work. On this one particular day, I'd just gotten off at 8am from a 12-hour shift and had exactly 8 hours before I had to be back in for another 12-hour shift. I also had to deal with an employee of the company I protect trying to start fistfights and punching me in the face just 20 minutes before my shift ended. So, I was already on edge. I pulled my car up to the front of my apartment and, being the friendly introvert I am, waved to the security guard who was looking directly at me and then went towards my front door. 
As I was moving through the big key ring to get my key out, my shoulder is grabbed and I'm violently turned around. Still haven't been able to settle down from the incident at work. I put the guy who grabbed me over the railing and on his head. Now, fortunately, he wasn't injured or anything, but it did take him a little minute to get up as he went a full 180 in under a second. When I realized it was the security guard of the complex, I walked over and tried to help him up. He fired off at me. You aren't allowed in the residence apartments. I'll have you fired for this. Now, I've seen this guy a few times when I went to check the mail, but he seemed not to recognize me. I can fully understand. I see 500 people walk in and out where I work, and I never bother learning names unless, one, I work with you every day, two, you're one of the big shots who actually can fire me in an instant, or three, you cause trouble frequently. Needless to say, I can understand the lack of recognition. So I say, I don't work here, I live here. BS, he immediately responded once he got back on his feet. I know our uniform, you're the new guy, supposed to be relieving me. He grabbed my arm and tried to show me where the car was. Remove your hand from my arm or I will remove it from yours, I say back. I was already done and looking at, at most, six hours of sleep, still in fight mode. I would have apologized later for this line, but spoilers. He's already on the radio, calling in his supervisor to come and deal with me. An hour later, the property manager is coming in to open the clubhouse. She stops, smiles and waves and comes over. Hi, didn't think you'd be out at this time. The property manager and I were pretty cool with each other. I'm skilled enough to make most repairs myself, I'm never late with rent, and I once ran out to the pool to perform CPR for a residence. She also knew from the inspection yesterday that I was going to be pulling a messed up 12 on, 8 off, 12 on couple days. Before I can explain anything, the other guard butted in. He was trying to go into a residence apartment. I got my supervisor on the way. He won't be doing it again here. Ladies and gentlemen, I turned him upside down. The property manager, a nice, sweet, older woman, was about to turn this idiot inside out. Before she could say anything, the officer's supervisor drove up and asked what was going on. She cut the officer off and told him, This fool is holding one of our residents hostage outside his apartment. I want him out of my complex five minutes ago and he'll not be coming back here ever. The supervisor just gave the officer a dismissive thumb back motion. He had no leeway to argue. The contractee can always tell who not to allow on any sites, even our own employees. Yeah, he was fired on the spot. And this is not the end, folks. Remember how I said we work for the same company? The corporate big shots decided to rehire him and send him to the largest employer they got and give him a second shot. He arrived for an interview at my facility where I had hiring power. In the interview, I included all of these three questions. One, are you going to keep anyone out that is supposed to be in here? Two, are you going to ask for credentials for anyone you don't know trying to enter? And three, are you going to grab anyone? He said no, and I accepted him into the facility. He's been working a year here now, and he's one of my best access control officers on site. Even to the point, someone claimed he let someone in that wasn't authorized, and I laughed instantly. Honestly, that is such a wholesome ending and it's actually really good to hear because clearly this guy was just, you know, a bit too overzealous. He was a bit too, you know, into his job, maybe a little bit aggressive, but clearly he is the sort of person that you want in this role. You know, he's doing his role seriously. Look, imagine, would you rather have him looking out for everyone, maybe doing a little bit too much, maybe going a little bit too strong, but, you know, doing his job well and, and being very detailed and, and making sure he's doing everything correctly or someone who, you know, is just on their phone, chilling, not looking at anything, not doing their job. I know what I'd rather have. So... For me, amazing to see that he got a second chance and that he t he took it with both hands. Um, kind of like your arm, OP. Uh, yeah, let's forget about that though. Anyway, guys, that is gonna do it for this episode of R slash I Don't Work Here Lady. Really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and you want to see more from this subreddit from me, check out a couple more videos on screen. If you are new around here, subscribe, and I'll see you all tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.